I'm not trying to frighten anyone, uh, but uh, that's probably the way a lot of people feel about the state of um, federal politics at the moment and certainly um, uh, to, a, to an extent uh, state politics as well with the rate at which governments have been changing hands recently. Um, Michael very kindly didn't mention that I'm a, a last minute ring in because my colleague Tony Walker, who's um, a lot more uh, down in the weeds and up, um, up to his ears in what's going on in Canberra um, and writing about it, had to pull out. So I'm the last minute substitute and uh, I'm probably up to my ankles in it at least, um, like anyone who's a, a citizen or a voter. Um, but I can't profess to have the, the detailed knowledge of what's going on in Canberra that Tony has, except uh, it's fairly obvious that it's heated and um, uh, it's difficult to know whether, whether uh, Tony Abbott's going to last another week or another three months or uh, even somehow miraculously struggle through to the 2016 election. Um, but uh, it, it all looks a bit of a mess and that has implications for policy and for um, uh, what uh, industry and what... Uh, backbenchers in uh, re uh, marginal seats and regional seats um, do about uh, the challenges facing them, which include re-election in the case of the backbenchers. Um, this is a cartoon, a David Rowe cartoon in the, in the Financial Review in, in the last few days. Um, as you can see, it shows a submarine policy and uh, as well as entertaining you, um, it's an illustration of how uh, when a government is weak and vulnerable, the landscape changes and um, opportunities, uh, you can tear your hair out about it, but opportunities do arise for uh, industries in um, uh, vulnerable regions and marginal seats and the, the submarine building industry, I suggest, is one, of the, one in Adelaide where its prospects are a little better than they were a month or uh, three months ago. Um, still seems likely the Japanese will actually build the things, but uh, it looks as though there will be <coughs> a, a little more work for the uh, shipyards and um, workers of Adelaide as a result of that. And that's probably a lesson for other industries in similar positions, marginal seats, regional, you know, um, vulnerable regions, where the federal government is going to want to shore up its position that uh, there are opportunities for enterprising businesses and uh, backbenchers, uh, even ministers, to um, change the landscape a bit. I'm not saying it's a good thing. Um, it's just where we're sort of at at the moment. Um, People get concerned about this uh, phenomenon of short-term governments and um, many people attribute it to the 24-7 media cycle, um, you know, politicians twittering and uh, what they did this morning and so on, um, and uh, the idea that that may be reducing their ability to uh, gain the trust or the respect of the voters. Um, I'm sure there is something to that, uh, you know, even as a, a slightly older journalist, I'm a a little bit alarmed at the extent to which we're expected to engage in social media at you know, what I would call the expense of, um, of time and uh, energy thinking more deeply about issues. Um, but I did want to put it in a broader context. Uh, we've had the experience with Rudd, Gillard, Abbott and it could be a Turnbull government um, in the near future in, in the last six years. At state level we've seen uh, uh, very short-lived um, Bailiw government, um, Dennis Napthine taking over and being shot out two years later, Campbell Newman in uh, Queensland. The US Congress flipped uh, twice against presidents in the last eight years so that they, you know, Bush ended up hamstrung in his last term and uh, uh, Obama was hamstrung in the House of Reps halfway through his first term and totally hamstrung for the last two years after the Senate turned on him last year. Uh, Gordon Brown, uh, um, David Cameron um, is facing an election soon in Britain. Uh, who knows whether he's going to survive? It's a very kind of dynamic um, landscape there. And we saw very short-term uh, governments change in Greece, Spain, Italy, Italy as soon as things turned sour for those economies. Um, and it looks... It, 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 to me, it's a phenomenon. You can go back to the 70s, was another period of, of, of financial and economic volatility and foreshortened... Uh, you know, horizons of opportunity for households and so on, and that tends to make uh, voters less um, less patient with their with their uh, governments. And we, we saw a three-year government, a Whitlam government in the 70s. Um, uh, in Britain, the prime minister uh, changed hands four times, I think, in the decade or five, if you count Maggie Thatcher. Um, and uh, we saw short-lived presidents in. Um, uh, in fact, none of those presidents served out the full eight-year term that uh, Reagan and uh, uh, Clinton and Obama enjoyed uh, in, the, in the aftermath. 
So, um, uh, and and that, that's going back to the 30s, uh, whether uh, Australia, um, obviously that was a time of intense um, financial stress, Australia, Britain and uh, Herbert Hoover had a short-lived um, career as US President. Um, and you can contrast that with long periods of stability and also prosperity uh, in the 50s and 60s and then in the 90s and uh, 2000s lead, leading up to the global financial crisis where you also saw long-lived governments. So in answer to the question, is, is uh, short-term governments with us to stay? Um, I would suggest there probably is something a little bit different in the electorate to the past, um, a little bit less patience and so on, but I would suggest that as soon as we return in the Western democracies return to some sort of uh, uh, you know, uh, economic stability and steadily growing prosperity, we'll see um, longer lived governments. Uh, and uh, another thing uh, useful to point out, um, the two Western countries that have probably been the most competitive uh, in the aftermath of the crisis, the US and Germany, um, I'm excluding Australia because we, were, we, we looked competitive but we were floated up on the, uh, on, on the um, resources uh, boom until it subsided. Uh, to a large extent, they had their ducks in a row before the crisis. The Germans did a lot of reform post-reunification in the early noughties and uh, in, in both labour markets and in their welfare system and in their budgets and it stood them in, in great stead uh, in the post-crisis period and, of course, they had the, um, they had the, the, the gift of a, a lower uh, exchange rate courtesy of the euro. Um, the US obviously has a lot it can do um, uh, on the infrastructure front and so on, but at least it has flexible labour markets and it has the, the reserve currency and the ability to borrow very cheaply and as a result uh, the US economy is doing better than most Western economies. Um, ragged governments, to use Tony uh, Abbott's term, uh, mostly don't get reform done or if they do it gets undone as soon as they get shot out, as happened with the Rudd and Gillard governments. Uh, and Rarely do they get better, I, I would suggest. I lost my uh, timing mechanism there. Um, so uh, I don't need to go through any of this in great detail. We know the, the uh, chaos and instability uh, in Canberra. Um, we were discussing the, the, uh, the administrative fees for foreign property buyers, uh, residential property buyers, and new uh, measures to uh, curb foreign investment in agricultural property earlier. Um, uh, whether, uh, I mean, you can argue about the extent to which it's justified. It uh, doesn't sound like a very good policy. Um, nobody thought it was needed. At least nobody at the political level thought it was needed uh, six months or a year ago, but it's apparently now become imperative. Um, and that's, you know, one, one way of the uh, government shoring up its position. Uh, the second one is not really to do with um, domestic economic policy. Uh, the, the third one there, penalty rates to stay regardless of the Productivity Commission report into the workplace system. That's supposed to be a comprehensive report. It's supposed to deal with every aspect of, of the labour relations system uh, and advise the government on how to make the, the, the labour relations, the labour market more competitive and the economy more efficient as a result. And it looks as though one, uh, one major um, issue that small firms in the hospitality industry especially complain about penalty rates is off the agenda because of the, purely because of the political difficulties the government finds it's, itself in. Oh. And uh, obviously at a, at a broader level, unpopular policies become harder to implement. Um, there's a whole bunch of other issues in, in uh, workplace relations, including uh, enterprise bargaining, that uh, you've got to wonder whether the government is, is going to have the confidence to, to try and prosecute in the next campaign and the next term. Uh, infrastructure privatisation seems to be a dirty word, even though we've lived with it for a long time in Victoria, and uh, nobody... Uh, well, there, there's no evidence that it's uh, hurt consumers and a bit of evidence that um, it's been a positive. All, it's, a, it's an easy issue to, uh, to sort of scaremonger about and um, it uh, uh, seems to be a negative in the current political context. So as a result, uh, less infrastructure will be built um, at least in Queensland and probably Victoria over the next uh, three or four years and contractors are already shedding labour in Victoria as a result of the East-West Link cancellation um, and uh, query whether they'll be able to do that in Queensland. Um, Spending, uh, I think uh, Martin Parkinson, the outgoing Treasury Secretary appointed by uh, Labor government is um, an advocate of the view that spending 
Uh, there may be opportunities to raise revenue through uh, tax reform in the short, uh, to some extent, but spending should bear the spending cut should bear the brunt of budget repair, and there doesn't appear to be any prospect of that getting through the Senate, um, even if the government still has the uh, political uh, confidence to prosecute it, which is doubtful. And federalism reform, look, I, I initially wrote, uh, forget about it. I'm not 100% now. I think maybe you know, there may be some uh, opportunities for federalism reform, but it's not. Clear, it's not clear to me where that's going to come from. Uh, policy reversals since 2013, uh, don't need to go through those. The only one at the end that I would um, uh, uh, mention, um, school funding reform probably gets overlooked in the productivity debate, but in terms of future productivity, uh, making the, the education system more effective and uh, more productive at the lower end um, of the performance spectrum is, uh, you know, a really good opportunity for future productivity and at the moment um, uh, we really don't know what's happening with uh, school reform from a federal point of view at any rate. Uh, having difficulty getting this work. Um, a lot of missed opportunities in the last six or seven years, the broad tax reform agenda that uh, uh, Ken Henry laid out in his um, uh, almost forgotten report, uh, most of it uh, hasn't been touched. Uh, superannuation, there's quite a bit to do there. Um, a lot of debate about it and it's very sensi sensitive, but um, a lot of people seem to think there's quite a bit of revenue to be raised and uh, a little bit of fairness to be restored there. Um, it is part of a tax review that the government is holding um, and uh, there may be some changes there coming up, uh, but um, at the moment we don't know what's happening. Family payments and budget repair uh, all seem to be off the agenda for now. Um, whoops. And question marks over industrial relations, as I mentioned. Uh, the energy industry, um, infrastructure, tax, uh, tax and superannuation. I um, mean, energy, there's a couple of uh, things go going on. Um, the, the, the uh, in, in the sense of an opportunity, the government's weakness appears to be uh, uh, pushing it towards resolving the renewable energy target um, impasse with, with Labor, which means that um, renewable, uh, wind, wind farm uh, investors and uh, builders of wind farms should be dust, probably dusting off their proposals after a period of um, uncertainty, uh, and uh, solar farms and any, any other qualifying renewable um, technology. Uh, onshore gas, there's a lot of demand for it in the... Um, in the uh, in the gas market, but um, uh, not really clear. I mean, apart from going ahead, gangbusters in Queensland and South Australia, uh, question mark how quickly New South Wales is moving. Um, and in Victoria, I think we, uh, Josh will comment in more detail about this, but I think we've, we're having a 12 month inquiry beginning in um, July uh, before we make any further decisions on that. So we're kind of in um, a state of, uh, uh, uncertainty there. Um, I mentioned the submarines and uh, before um, uh, susceptibility to union industry special pleading is enhanced um, and I would imagine there's a lot of people dusting off their proposals and trying to work out uh, how they can take advantage of that situation and it uh, would obtain more broadly in defence procurement um, beyond submarines, the shipyards in Melbourne. Uh, I would suggest um, it's time to be fairly active. Uh, infrastructure is um, uh, also obviously in a state of flux, uh, probably in the opportunity sense, states meet the, that are meeting federal requirements in, in that area will have, um, uh, I wrote scoop pool there, that's probably, um, probably exaggerating, but uh, whilst um, Victoria and Queensland are getting their, trying to get their ducks in a row on that front, uh, New South Wales has an opportunity um, subject to the election coming up, which looks a little more line ball than uh, previously thought to, um, uh, to uh, establish their credentials and um, put their foot on a bit more of that federal money. Uh, foreign property buyers, uh, anyone who can um, creatively establish, creatively but convincingly establish a, um, foreign, uh, a local domicile for a foreign buyer, um, it's probably got some good business opportunities in front of them. Uh, Finally, will a change of leader make any difference? Um, uh, it would obviously have to make some difference to the government's um, political position. Uh, I think Malcolm Turnbull would um, 
have a more coherent approach to policy, which would be a good thing. Uh, he was, um, we have to remember, he was very unpopular with his colleagues and they performed very badly in the polls the last time he was leader. Uh, so we hope he's learned a few lessons from that. Um, I assume he has, and I assume his colleagues have learned uh, that uh, getting rid of the carbon tax was not the answer to their, uh, might be the answer to their dreams, but it wasn't the answer to their political problems in the longer term. They obviously have to come up with a, a more compelling policy in, uh, in both that area and a whole range of um, other areas. So um, I think I'm over time, so I'll leave it at that, and I look forward to your questions a bit later on. Thanks for your attention.